Okay. Welcome back. I am at uh, Killington Bike Park. Uh, and I am M. Fresh. E. M. Fresh. And uh, we're going down a blue technical called a Krusty. It's pretty long. And it's long because it's as long as the uh, black or blue magic. It's uh, about 2.7 miles down of technical riding. Um, now, uh, as I ride these trails, I have to ask myself, what is technical? What makes a trail blue technical and black technical? Um, and uh, I believe the black diamonds technical, uh, kind of like the one I'm about to show you after this, I included uh, another a double, or actually a black diamond technical at the end it's called uh, rabbit hole it's on the other side of the bike park in the beginner section and uh it's just not as long so uh tentacle means uh, rocky and uh rudy and so the blue is not as rocky and broody and uh as narrow and you can actually have a line, like here, you see me riding, I'm, there's actually a line, which means a, actually a clear path through where you can actually even avoid most of the rocks and roots. And uh, on the black diamond technical, there is no path through. There's really no lines, really. You just got to find the least rocky path or just plow through the, uh, the section as fast as you can and hope your tire doesn't get uh, locked up in a rock. So again here I'm at Killington Bike Park uh, and we're riding the Blue Technical Trail uh, called Krusty. And uh, it's going pretty good for me right now. I haven't slipped or pedal striked or anything. It's just a very long trail. There's a lot of twists and turns. Kind of wet. It was very foggy up here this morning. And so I'm trying not to hit any of those leaves so I wouldn't slide around because there's no traction on a leaf. Okay, this is, uh, okay, we're going through a little stopping point here. Trying to get my uh, rest. Okay, actually I didn't rest on this one. I believe the next part I will rest. Okay, so I'm going around trying to avoid the leaves. There's no jumps per se, but there's drop-offs. There's some uh, minor rocks. They're not three foot high or two foot high or uh, not even a foot high. So uh, you have pretty, pretty uh, a lot of grip. And so uh, a lot safer. Okay, so we're headed down a little steep section here. And again, the GoPro doesn't know justice how steep this stuff is. Uh, and I can tell I'm getting a lot better at, uh, at riding now. I'm, this is the first time I'm going down this, so I'm uh, a lot more confident. Mainly because I probably did Black Magic, a uh, double diamond flow trail. So that gave me a lot of confidence. And also I did uh, the, uh, um, the Gold Skull double diamond technical. And I figure in my mind, it psyched me up to believe that if I can do those double diamonds, I can do a uh, little blue technical trail. Uh, so I'm going a little faster, still being a little cautious, but the uh, speed is definitely there. I'm getting more confident in the uh, spacers that I put inside my fork. Okay. And then here I stop for a little bit. I'm learning that I, it's good to take a rest sometimes. You don't have to go all the way through because when you get fatigued, your arms turn to jello, your legs uh, start cramping up or whatever. <laughs> you need to, you will have an accident and fall. I had, uh, haven't fell in a long time actually. What I mean by a long time, I just started riding. The only time I fell down, I fell down twice. It was, at Snowshoe when I first got the uh, Fury and I didn't realize how how powerful the 
travel and the shock was, and I didn't have any rebound. My rebound was turned all the way fast. And then I try to do a table or a jump a tabletop coming off a dream weaver there. And I went flying, sitting my ass flying. They say I went like 10 feet in the air because um, I thought I was riding like my high tower, but it's a totally different ride. You have like 200 millimeters of travel. And then the way the Fury bends, like it's uh, at the pivot, it's a different type of uh, flex. And even the flex gives you some uh, spring as well uh, when uh, paired with the coil. And so, uh, yeah, it was very scary. I think they even had a drone come <laughs> see if I was okay because I was laying there for like 10 minutes on the ground. And, uh, but luckily I had my, uh, I had some armor on and uh, got my uh, size scraped up. Um, so now I wear some bibs, like a bib with overalls that, uh, so my pants don't slide off. I mean, I'll lose uh, 10 pounds of 10 to 15 pounds of water weight while riding because I'm pretty muscular uh, and I just retain water. I think my muscles just retain water. I don't know why. So I'll start the day at uh, 235 and by the end of the day, I'll be 220. And so my pants will fall down and be very uh, loose. And, uh, and so, uh, when I fell before, I, I slid so far, I just bruised blood all over the place, bruised my sides up, and then my knee pads came off. So I had some cheap pair of knee pads. Uh, they actually weren't cheap, it just slid off. Like, uh, and so I started doing some research, and I'll, give a, I'll do a video on, uh, as a matter of fact, on the best pads that, I, uh, uh, that you can get um, for especially for a new rider and even for a uh, uh, advanced rider because uh, you just never know when you're gonna fall like it uh, you could be riding along and you think you have it and then there's a leaf or a loose pebble or something and you're going 20 25 30 miles an hour in a place like Krusty <laughs> or in a trail like Krusty like now and you think you've done it a million times and then that's your ass all over the ground. And so, uh, yeah, good protection. I don't skip on it, even um, uh, if I think that I know the trail very well. I uh, totally bundle up because the injury is, uh, will put you out for a long time. And uh, then you'll be sad, depressed. <laughs> I'm just joking, you won't get sad, depressed. Because you can't ride. And so, uh, you see how long this trail is. It's very long, very fast, technical. If you have your fork jock set up, uh, I see a lot of people riding uh, with just regular trail bikes and they have to stop because the uh, trail bikes can't take too much abuse um, because one, they don't have the uh, the travel um, so you need to get something with a lot of travel uh, a bike with a lot of travel like I say 160 or higher in travel on the fork I don't find the back really doesn't matter I mean, you could actually ride as a hardtail I rode the guy at uh, Snowshoe he had a hardtail but he was had a very uh, like a 170 fork and a hardtail on the back I was like, there's no way you can get down that. I, I'll see if I can call him up and do a video. See if I can follow him a lot faster. That's when I first started. And uh, he goes off trail. Like, there is no trail. Like, he just goes down a hill. And uh, uh, the steepest hills you can find, where you can't, they're just straight down. You can't even stop the brakes. You're just sliding. Kind of like remind me of that guy on YouTube called Remy. I can't even pronounce, pronounce his last name, Metallier or something like that. Yeah, this guy is crazy, and I dumbly followed him, and I was in no had no business doing that, following him. I was even more so experienced just starting out. Um, so okay, so we're at the bottom of Krusty, and 
here. This is uh, the GoPro 9. The first one was a GoPro 10 on Krusty. So also just want to show you the, the difference between the two. Tell me in the comments if you can tell the difference. I honestly can't. Now this is a little bit softer because this has, the GoPro 9 has the media mod on it uh, or the media lens on it. So it restricts the resolution to two, I think 2.7K or something like that. Still good resolution. I mean, no one's gonna look at it that uh, big unless you're on a 4K TV. And, uh, but uh, then the uh, Krusty was done on the GoPro 10. And this also has the, it has the, the lens on it, the uh, lens mod and the media mod. So there's no wind noise on this. I turned the wind down or I turned the sound on the GoPro down so I could talk over it. And this is a black diamond called uh, Rabbit Hole. It's just a trainer. Gets you get people trained to do more technical stuff on the uh, beginner side. That's the snow shed side. Okay. And uh, all the longer trails on the ram's head side. So there's a snow shed lift and then there's a ram's head lift. And then in the next video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it as we go down this rabbit hole. Um, you'll see uh, we get to the gondola. I have to take the ram's head gondola to uh, Slideshow Bob. And there's a technical you can take, but by that time it was the end of the day and I was so tired, I just couldn't do any more technicals. I think it's called Tiger something, Tiger Thief or something. <laughs> Uh, black Tiger, I think it was called. And it's just a short oh, black diamond that you take that and it gets you to the K1 gondola. And uh, I don't know what we're talking about here. I think they're, oh, they're just explaining to me. Uh, Cause I was following these guys as father and son team and they were just telling me, uh, showing me different trails that I didn't know existed. And they live around here, so. Um, this is a rabbit hole, but it turns into a blue flow trail uh, from, the uh, from the Black Diamond Technical. And so what they're telling me is uh, they're riding, uh, just give me a heads up what's happening, what's about to befall me, because this is my first time riding it. So. And uh, after that, they're gonna go to the Ram's Head side, and they're gonna show me how to get there. Uh, if I can keep up, up oh, there we are. And uh, this was shot yes the day before, before I even did the long one. So uh, the long one, the trails like the Black Magic and the Black Blue Magic and the, and the crust you saw before this. So uh, the main reason me, sh me showing you this is just to show you the progression of. Now Killington, if you're on the snowshed side, that's the beginner side. It takes you from green, green technical, or green flow, green jump, or green flow, green jump to blue flow, blue jump, and then blue technical, and then you have that black diamond, the rabbit hole. And then once you can do those, um, and there you can do that for two or three days, this the snowshed side for two or three days if you're new and get up to speed. I wish I had, like they had that time, uh, like a, two weeks or so, and then I could literally perfect my uh, riding. You just have everything here in one place. And the progression is smooth. Like you, there's no, like in Mass Set, you have these smooth greens and then you get to the top and it just turns into a total pro line. Every, even the blues, the, the crunchy and the creamy were uh, just carnage for someone who hasn't learned something like that before. <laughs> okay, here we're going to Ram's Head. This is pretty fun. I'm just going on the highway as fast as we can. I think we're up to like 45, 50 miles an hour. Putting my head down, trying to copy the other people ahead of me. So I can feel some of the wind, the wind shear or the wind resistance pulling me back by that don't uh, duck down and uh, get rid of some of that uh, resistance. Okay, so next video, um, the last video is that I'm gonna show you is the K1 area. I'm tired, so 
There's 17 trails up here. There's no way. I just did one. I believe it's called a blue called Shreddy. And uh, stay tuned. Subscribe uh, to see more. And thank you for watching.